بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Continuing in our lesson of Aqidah Tawasatiya by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala We left off in the last lecture we were speaking about istawa about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rising above his throne subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that suits his majesty and we reached the chapter in which Shaykh al-Islam mentioned about the sifat from the Quran of Alu you know of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being above his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala and he mentions the verses where Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says wa qawluhu ya Isa inni mutawafika wa rafi'uka ilayhi wa qawluhu bal rafa'ahu Allah ilayhi wa qawluhu ilayhi yas'adu al kalim al kalim al tayyib wa amal al salih yarfa'uhu wa qawluhu ya hamanu ya hamanu ibn ya hamanu ibn li صرحا لعلي أبلغ الأسباب أسباب السماوات فأطلع إلى إله موسى وإني لأظنه كذاب وقوله آمنت من في السماء أن يخسف بكم الأرض فإذا هي تمور أم آمنت من في السماء أن يرسل عليكم حاسبا فستعلمون كيف نذير. So in those verses, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, those verses affirm for us the characteristic of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala of being above His creation. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is raised above His creation, Subhanahu wa Taala, or He. And in the last chapter, we we spoke about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, raising above his throne subhanahu wa ta'ala and in a manner that suits his majesty subhana in the first verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and he said and remember when Allah said O Isa to Jesus alayhi salatu wa salam I will take you and raise you to myself and that was in surah to Ali Imran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says but Allah raised him Jesus up with his body and soul unto himself so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised Isa alayhi salatu wa salam up unto himself subhana and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him ascend all the goodly words and the righteous deeds exalted and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says O Haman build me a tower that I may arrive at the ways, the ways of the heavens, and I may look upon the Ilah, the God of Moses, but verily I think him to be a liar, meaning he, this was Fir'aun speaking to Haman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you feel secure that he who is over the heaven, meaning Allah, will not cause the earth to sink with you? Then behold, it shakes. Or do you feel secure that he who is over the heaven will not send against you a violent whirlwind? Then you shall not know how terrible has been my warning. So all of these verses, they affirm for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, above his creation and separate from his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Ahl Sunnah we affirm, and this is a part of our Iman, that we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a, a, a rose above his throne and that he's above his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation does not contain him tabarak wa ta'ala and we affirm which is the creed of ahl sunnah that we affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne and is above his creation in a manner that suits his majesty meaning we don't know the kafi as we mentioned as we mentioned the athar of imam malik where imam malik rahimahullahu ta'ala he said when he was asked about how 
does Ar Rahman rise above his throne? Imam Malik was asked by a person of bid'ah, of innovation, uh, about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord, the creator of the heavens and earth, how he subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne. And Imam Malik, he said that uh, Al Astoa Ma'loom wa kayfiya majhool wa su'al anhu bid'a. So he said that the istawa, the rising, is known, meaning it's known from the Arabic language. And it's known and we affirm what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms about himself, that he rose above his throne, Ar-Rahman, ala ars istawa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, rose above his throne. So Imam Malik affirmed that because Imam Malik was an Imam of Ahlul Sunnah, Imam of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And he affirmed that principle. He affirmed what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about himself without changing the meaning without distorting the meaning. So he said that al-istawa ma'loom, you know, istawa is, is known. It's known that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rolls above his throne. Wa kayfiya majhul, and how is unknown. And asking about it is a bid'a, is, is an innovation, is bid'a. And so this shows us that important qa'idah that we've been constantly mentioning uh, in regards to uh, in regards to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine uh, names and attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ahl Sunnah describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself we affirm what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself in the Quran and we affirm what Allah what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in his authentic sunnah alayhi salatu wa salam and we negate what Allah negates about himself and we negate what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam negated about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes are perfect and they suit his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a benefit Shaykh Salih bin Fuzan hafadhullah ta'ala he mentioned in his explanation of wasatiya, he mentioned the difference between al istawa wa alu, the difference between Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, rising, meaning rising above His throne, and alu, alu meaning to be high or above, and the difference, Sheikh uh, uh, al Alama uh, Salib bin Fuzan, hafidhullah taala, he said, and al alu. Min sifat of that. Well, istawa min sifat al af'al. He said that alu, which is the sifat we were just speaking about, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his creation. His being above his creation, these are one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat, and we said this in our previous lectures, which refer to his that, which refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how he described himself. Meaning these are characteristics that never separate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These characteristics, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is how he is. He is always above his creation. Well, istawa, meaning, for example, as Allah mentions, Ar Rahman ala ars istawa, that he rose above his throne. Istawa is one of the uh, divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are uh, from his sifat al fi'liya or al af'al, meaning that these are the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which refer to. Uh, an action that Allah, the Lord of the heavens and earth, that He subhanahu wa ta'ala does. These refer to one of His af'al. And that uh, this af'al of alu, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does it in a manner that in according with His, accordance with His will, and whenever and however He pleases, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where is the sifat of thatia? Meaning that Allah, like Allah, for example, Allah's alu over his creation, that he is always, that is his uh, divine characteristic, which is always present, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always above his uh, creation. But the istawa, maybe sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in a manner that suits his majesty, as he as was mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, yanzilu rabbuna tabarak wa taala kulu thulut al-layl al-akhir. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that our Lord, 
يَنزِلُوا رَبُّنَا تَبَارَكَ تَعَلَى That our Lord the Almighty, He descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night. So that shows that at times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is descending. So both of those are attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do not contradict one another. Why don't they contradict one another? Because they're both warada or mentioned in the nusus, the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which has no ta'arad, which has no, um, no contradictions. And there is no contradiction in the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times he ascends and he uh, ascends above his throne and that at times he subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last third of the night he descends in a manner that suits his majesty and the kafiya the how is unknown to us so to ponder and reflect and go deep in those matters which we have no knowledge about is of no benefit to us. In fact, it can lead us to innovation. And this is very important for us to realize this, that this is a principle to not go, to not try to go too deep into the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes and, and even reflecting upon those things which we have no knowledge of or our knowledge is limited. As Allah mentions in the Quran that He gave us limited knowledge. Our knowledge is limited. No matter how much we can expand, Allah has favored us from His crea creatures to be able to ponder and reflect. And our knowledge expands. But our knowledge is still limited. Even our expansions, if we were able to do and use our brain for 100% of, uh, of its usage that uh, and, and I'm not sure what the percentage of, the, of it that we do use which is limited even as far as uh, scientific evidence empirical evidence shows us it's, it's limited and even if we were to use it 100% it would still be limited in comparison to uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us as potential Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only given us limited knowledge, there are knowledge there's knowledge of the unseen we will never know and that is reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth. So my point was being that we should not delve into manners that, are, uh, that we have limited or no knowledge of. For example, dwelling into the Qadr, going in deep, in depth about the Qadr, the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We only know what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, first and foremost, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, and what is mentioned in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and those sahih athar on the salaf, and what they understood of the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we know. But to go into deep, deep, and to begin to question, this is how people go astray. And the proof of this is that we see the early sects in Islam, the Jahmiya, the Mu'tazila, the then the later sects that, that innovated after them, like the Asha'ira, and before them, of course, the Qadariya, those people who innovated and went astray with regards to the Qadr, the divine creed of Allah. Why? Because they began to use their aql and their intellect to make their judgments over the Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that goes against the minhaj of the Salaf. It goes against the minhaj that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given us uh, and favored us with the minhaj and nabuwa. Instead, we go with the nasus, ahl sunnah. We judge by the Quran and the sunnah and the ijma of the ummah, the ijma of the salaf al-salih, radiallahu ta'ala anum ajma'in. That's how we make our judgments and our evidence comes from that. But some of the groups like the Asha'ira and some of those other groups who had went astray, some of them falling into bidah mukaffara, that bidah which takes them out of the fold of Islam. Some of them, like the Asha'ira and others, have bidah ghayr mukaffara, meaning they have innovation which did not take them out of the fold of Islam. They have the excuse of ta'wil, of making uh, false uh, misinterpretation of the evidences. But instead of just outright negating the evidence, but as we illustrated before in our previous lectures, it's still a type of ilhad fi asma'i wa sifat. And so those groups, they went astray with regard to the uh, divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those foundations of Iman, like the Qadr and so forth. Those things, and even the Yom Al-Qiyamah and Adhab Al-Qabr and all of the, these things from our Asul, Asul Iman. This is where uh, Ahl Bid'ah, many of them, they went astray. Why? Because they made preference of their intellect over the nasus of Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another benefit that Shaykh Salah ibn Fuzan he mentioned that he mentioned 
أن العلو من صفات ثابتة بالعقل والنقل well istawa thabit bil naqli la bil aqli so this is a beautiful faida that we gain from our ulama ulama of ahl sunnah he mentioned hafizallahu ta'ala he mentioned that alu the sifat of uh, of alu that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his creation is a sifat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is affirmed by the intellect so it shows us Ahl Sunnah does not reject the intellect, but we just use the nasus of the Quran and the Sunnah to make our judgments regarding the intellect, on how to use and benefit from the intellect, and how to understand the religion. We we yahkum nahkum bi nasus. We use the the text, the evidences of the Quran and the Sunnah is how we know and understand the religion, how we know and understand aqidah, not based on our intellect, based on wow, this makes sense to me. I think this must be true. Or oh, the Sharia must be uh, compatible with communism because I, the way my in my limited studies I've um, found a uh, some compatibility or whatever the different kinds of deviation that people fall into because of their aql because of their intellect but rather Ahl Sunnah does not negate the intellect but we just use the intellect in the most in its most uh, befitting an esteemed form, which is to use it in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, Shaykh Salih bin Fuzan, Salih bin Fuzan, have Allah Taala. He mentioned that alu, which uh, the, the characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa taala, which we said is from his that that he is always over his creation, that this characteristic is affirmed for us by our intellect. In, in that mo- that even those people, non-Muslims and pagans even, and others that have any concept of, of God, they all believe, they all, uh, you know, when they supplicate, they, they supplicate and they raise their hands generally. And they believe and they bow their heads in humility because they believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above them. But then they deviate in their various... Uh, reflection. Some believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a part of his creation. Some believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in his creation. All, and, and, and all these various deviant beliefs. However, Ahl Sunnah, we affirm the, uh, that uh, Al-Alu is affirmed also through the intellect. That you can reach this conclusion as those other deviant groups and even those people of disbelief have reached that uh, conclusion from their intellect. One knuckle, as uh, Imam uh, Fulzan says, Allah Ta'ala, also the knuckle, also by the nusus, the nusus, meaning the Quran and the Sunnah. When we're referring to a knuckle, we're referring to the Quran in the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, the textual proofs. And then he said, وَإِسْتَوَى ثَابِتْ بِالنَّقْلِ وَلَا بِالْعَقْلِ He said that the istawa, the characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he rose above his throne, that this is affirmed for us through the naql, through the text of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not by the intellect, not by the aql. Why? Because you, you wouldn't be able to sit in seclusion, seclusion and derive this, or just from looking into the creation, looking at the the signs of Allah subhanahu wa taala's uh, creation, his his um, his uh, ayat koniya, the 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 signs in the creation, from looking at the sea and looking at the sun and the moon and the stars and pondering and reflecting on their beauty and who is the one who created this, you wouldn't be able to draw the conclusion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne ar-rahman ala ars istawa you only know that from the text from the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because it's mentioned there so characteristics like that divine attributes like that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are only known from the nusus and that shows us that's a very important qaida that imam fozan uh, illustrated for us letting us know that that some things, uh, especially regarding aqidah, regarding your belief, your iman, that you can only derive these things from the Quran and the Sunnah. Sometimes there's some divine wisdom that you may be able to come across. You may, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have made it known to us the wisdom for certain things in our ibadah. But 
most of these things are ibadah and our, our aqidah are things that are related to our iman and they're related to things that we only know about them from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. We wouldn't know about them otherwise. We wouldn't be able to reflect and know about their existence or know how to correctly believe except for coming across the textual evidence of the Quran. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in His divine uh, book, the Quran, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is perfect. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And through the authentic nusus, uh, the authentic uh, text of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the ahadith. This is how we know those matters. And those other uh, issues, some issues we can um, come across, as we mentioned before, like the sifat that Allah is above His creation, that is known both by the intellect and by the, uh, the textual proofs. And so these are some of the important qawaid that, uh, we, that the imams of Ahlul Sunnah have uh, highlighted for us and illustrated for us and derived from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for us and from the minhaj of the Salaf Asaleh radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een wa rahmatullah alayhim jami'an ajma'een that these principles are for us to practice and understand in accordance with the text of Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala anything that I said was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam